Welcome to The Door Church Live. For the next few weeks, we'll be meeting online. The church hasn't changed, we just changed locations. From the sanctuary to wherever you are joining us. Our live stream will start in about 10 minutes. This will give you an opportunity to grab a snack, cup of coffee, your family, and of course your Bible. Let's get ready to share the Word of God together. Once again, welcome to all of our church family and visitors.
Hello, welcome to the Door Church and wherever you're viewing from right now. You're not just a spectator, but you're able to participate in what God's doing in our world. Our service is about to start. We are very excited to hear the word that has been carefully prepared for all of us. But first, let's not sit passively by. Let's stand together, lift our hands together, sing together, and worship God together right wherever you are. God bless you all. Thank you again for joining us. And remember, we're in this together. God bless you.
These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Oh, these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore. We are the voice in the desert. Oh,
bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome the grave glory fills the highest place what can separate me now worship god right where you're at lord you're worthy to be praised god Touch your church, my God, and I'll pour of your spirit in every household, every sanctuary, God, I pray, God, that you move supernaturally, God, tonight, yes, Lord, God, uh, move you, Lord, your grace and power God. in your church. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want to go before God in prayer tonight. Uh, those who are watching, we have a, uh, some needs that we want to bring before God. Of course, our governing officials, President Donald Trump, uh, our Vice President Mike Pence, uh, that God's hand will be upon them. Uh, and all those who have may have been infected by this uh, virus, that God would heal their bodies. Uh, also for the families, the friends, the loved ones who have uh, had to endure the hardships of this, uh, losing someone, that God would comfort them. Let's also pray for people around the world, that God would help them financially. Uh, amen. Uh, let's bring this all before God. And as you have an, uh, a need on your heart, we'll agree with you wherever you are. Uh, amen. Uh, for all these needs. If you have any specific needs you want to send to us, you can email uh, the door amarillo at gmail.com uh, so we can lift up your need, your specific need, and agree with you in prayer uh, and lift us up with you as well. Uh, let's also pray for our sister Judith that God would help her this time, that God would heal this cancer on her body. Uh, amen. And other people that you may know that are sick, uh, amen, need healing on their body. So let's go before God in prayer, uh, praying for our spiritual leaders, our, our governing leaders. Uh, and leaders around the world, amen. Let's pray for uh, our pastor, Pastor Serafico, Sister Janelle, uh, and this time as well, that God would help them and the church body, that God would protect them as well and everybody, amen. Let's go before God and pray. Father, we ask God that you would help every person in need right now, Lord, that you would heal their bodies. God, every, Lord, financial crisis, Lord, that you would touch them right now. We're asking God right now a miracle. Lord, I'm praying, God, that you would move on our governing officials, help Governor Abbott. God, I pray President Donald Trump, our mayor, Ginger Nelson, God, that you would lead her and help her, God. Lord, all medical staff, all health care professionals. Father, I pray that you would move on every pastor, every leader, every missionary. God, have your hand upon them, their families, their congregations. We bring all of these to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome everybody. Amen. Who's tuning in. Uh, to these live stream services, and we want to encourage you to keep tuning in. Uh, amen. Uh, to a few announcements. Sunday morning, we're going to be having a drive-in service uh, here as we do on the, on the same side, on the uh, east side of the building. Uh, so uh, I'd encourage you to come, drive in. Uh, the services begin at 1030, and uh, so you want to drive in, come early, get a spot to park uh, to hear the Word of God. Amen. And then Sunday evening will be again the uh, uh, live stream service. Uh, so maybe you can, if you're at home, you can feel free to join in on that. Uh, the live stream service at 6.30 p.m. Sunday night. And of course, every, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Same time uh, across the board. Uh, amen. Uh, we uh, want to go into the offering part of things. I want to encourage you. If this is a time that you are, might be struggling financially, I encourage you to give to God. The Bible says uh, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And this is a moment that would try, that would test uh, many things that may oppose you. Reasoning, amen, your own understanding to where it comes to tithes and offerings, uh, amen. But this is a time where God really says to put him to the test. And I want to challenge you here tonight, uh, amen, as you are in your living rooms, uh, as some of you may even be experiencing layoffs, furloughs, and whatnot. That this is a time to really take God at His Word, uh, that His Word is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And so we want to test God. And this is one of the areas that God says to test Him in. Amen. Is in the realm of giving. Because God, amen, doesn't need to be put to the test. But He wants to display uh, how good His promises are and how He will honor His promise. Uh, amen. He wants to bless His people. So I encourage you here tonight, if you're watching uh, you get your envelope, begin to write your check out. If you are writing a check, write it to the Door Christian Fellowship. If you're going to mail it, you can mail it to our P.O. Box. That is 19274, zip code 79114. 
Uh, you can mail it there, or you can use our Cash App option right now. Download it on your phone, and uh, you can use that or, or Cash App and send it right now. Or you can bring it to the church every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 to about 9 o'clock a.m. Feel free to bring your offering, amen, uh, uh, and drop it off here at the church uh, uh, physically. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Amen. May God bless you as you give. Amen. Your tithe is 10%. Your offering besides, if you are making a pledge, please notate that on the cash app. What you're giving for. For instance, if it's tithe, right tithe. If it's offering, right offering. If it is a pledge, right pledge. If it is for the venue, please specify what you are giving for. This will help us tremendously uh, on that and on your check that you do send. Amen. God bless you as you give. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Yeah. Praise God. Musicians, God bless you. And we do want to encourage you to tune in for tonight's service. Uh, amen. This evening we have a, a special treat for everyone that is listening. The Bible says that a testimony has the ability, amen, to destroy Satan. It is the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony. And tonight we have a few testimonies. These are life stories. These are not rehearsed. Amen. Uh, it was a testimony that came from the, the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus of his conversion. And it was this testimony that went throughout all the world and caused many different churches to be born, many different people to be saved. The power of a changed life has the ability to reach many people. And this evening, I want to encourage you, amen, to join with us our testimonies of a life change, a 180 turnaround this evening. And the first one we want to have is our brother Luis Diaz, amen. Just to give you a little bit about Luis Diaz as he, he came to Amarillo a few years ago. Amen. From Fresno, California. His life has been dramatically changed by the power of God. And tonight he wants to share his story. Amen. Find somebody because these testimonies can reach somebody where they are. That's the point of these testimonies. Amen. Is to reach somebody where they are, where they are. Maybe in a gang life, in a situation where it is, uh, amen, a testimony can really touch them, amen, and help them where they are. So I encourage you, sit down and enjoy these testimonies here tonight, what God has done. Praise God. <clears throat> Tonight I want to read a scripture. Luke uh, says this, Luke 4, 18, it says this, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he has set to heal the broken, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the accepting year of the Lord. Why I said this scripture? Because God uh, began to speak to me and he told me, you know what? That was you. And that was me at one time that I was captive in my life. I was captive in my mind. I was captive in my heart. All I knew it was the street life asking, acting crazy and living a crazy life. You know, I was bound. But you know what? In my life, I was broken also too. You know, I grew without a father and you know what? And you know what? It was hurting me inside. And I went to the streets and became and you know, a gang member hanging out in the, in the neighborhood. And you know what? God uh, set me free from that. And I want to tell you, I was bound into drugs, into alcohol, acting crazy alive, living in a, in a tormented life, having no joy, having no peace. But you know what? The love of God came into my life and set me free. And tonight, I want to tell you, you might be bound tonight. You might be a captive tonight. You know what? God can set you free tonight. I, I grew up thinking that this was the life that I had, that you know what? This was the, the, the way was the way to go. You know what I mean? I thought, you know what? You live in the hood and you're going to die in the hood. That was my whole mentality. And you know, but you know what? That was a, that was a lie from the, the enemy. That was a lie from the devil. Because you know what? That wasn't the way to go. That wasn't thing. I had no hope. I have no, I had no, no life. 
in going all that way. I was bound. I was hooked. I, you know, my mind, I was always mad and angry because of the issues that happened into my life. But you know what? Someone told me about the love of God, how he could change my life, how he could give me a new beginning. And you know what? I bowed my knees in Fresno County, and I told somebody, you know what? I don't want to be like this. But you know what? He told me you don't have to be like this. He, God can help you, and God can set you free. So that day when I bowed my knee down to Jesus Christ, he changed my life. But you know what? I was hurting inside. And I, I was messed up, and I didn't know the way out, you know. And I and I asked and I asked for help, you know what I mean? I went to AAA meetings looking for deliverance. I went to alcohol class. I went to anger management classes, looking for something that would change my life. But you know what? Nothing would change my life. You know what? And but one day when someone told me about Jesus Christ, how He would come and change people's lives how he could come into my life. And you know what? I gave my life to Jesus. It was the best thing of my, of my, it was the best day of my life. And I want to tell you tonight, God loves you and God cares for you. He can set you free. That's why I read the scripture, because God came for that reason. I was bound in my mind. My mind was messed up. I was hurting in my heart. My life was torn apart. But you know what? When Jesus came in, he changed me. He could help me. And you know what? I never thought in a million years that I could get out of this. You know what? I thought you live in the hood and you die in the hood. That was my mentality. But you know what? That's, not, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And you might be stuck tonight. You might be that there's no hope. You might have no joy. And I want to tell you tonight that God can set you free. Because he's a God that sets people free. I don't have to act crazy. I don't have to walk with the limp. You know what I mean? I can walk up straight. I can walk proud with my head up high. Because Jesus touched my life. He set my mind free. He, he, he healed my broken life that I had. It was all messed up. <clears throat> there was an incident in my life where my life really took a turn. I was shot, and they shot my brother. I was left for dead. It was crazy. But you know what? God had mercy and grace. God loved me even when I was a sinner, when I was there. And I want to tell you tonight, you might not have no hope. You might be in a bad situation. But God is there for you. He can help you. He can set you free. I'm living proof. God is a good God. God is a loving God. And tonight, if you're out there, you know what? That's why Jesus came in, into the picture. He came to set the captive free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to fix what was broken. And tonight, God loves you and he cares for you. And he can do a work in your life if you just open up your heart and let Jesus in. The Bible says, he whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I give God all the praises tonight. Because you know what? I knew I won't be standing here if it wasn't for Jesus. I'd be either six feet under the ground or locked up in prison for the rest of my life. Because that's the way I was going. But I give God all the praises and all the glory tonight. Amen. Hello. I just um, want to thank God for my salvation. Um, I want to thank him for saving me as a teenager on the verge of adulthood. Um, I grew up in a broken home. My parents divorced uh, when I was four years old. I was right before my fifth birthday. So I, I knew what a broken home was before I knew anything else, you know. And because of my parents divorcing, my mom became very bitter. And she would take that out on us, on, on, the kid, on 
I have a, a sister and a brother, and she would take it out on us, and she wasn't uh, very affectionate, and she had to work. She was, you know, left with the burden of taking care of three children, and, and so she had to work, and uh, my brother was, like, in his mid-teen years, and he moved out of the house, and then my sister, um, she became a young mom, and so she ran away as well, so it was just me and my mom, and at this point, I was maybe about 10 years old, and so it was, you know, I didn't grow up with, like, a, a loving family environment, I, and so I had to grow up quick, and um, so as, as time progressed, and, and, you know, the, I guess, just living on your own and not having a, a relationship with a parent and not being around siblings, you kind of like learn to just like live on your own without like companionship and you know other people. So like when I got into middle school and, and I think that the you know the issues of my childhood started to kind of like show up and so I remember being an angry like teenager and I remember I didn't like to be you know told what to do by my teachers and um, so it was like rebellious and in high school, when I got into high school, um, my junior year, I got introduced to pot. I started to get high, and I really liked that because, like, instantly I was hooked because it was like a way of, like, self-medicating and, and numbing, and um, and it was fun for a little bit, and I, it was something that I did for, like, two years, and but it wasn't something that was, like, you know, it, the, the enjoyment didn't last very long. It was good wh while you had the supply, and then once the supply was gone, you're like, okay, now what? And so when I was little, when I was young, maybe about 12 years old, I actually had given my life to Jesus Christ uh, when I was 12, but my mom didn't allow me to go to church. So I didn't stay saved, but I feel like even back then, God had, like, set me aside and because even growing up, I always felt like if I was to die in my sin, I'm not going to make heaven my home. So when after I graduated uh, in 2001 from high school, in September, you know, we September 11th happened. And I remember coming out of my room and watching that news story and just this panic and fear overcame me because I, I felt like, you know, that was the end of the times. And I wasn't ready to meet Jesus. Like, I felt like I knew that I would not make heaven my home if, if Jesus was to come back at that point. So there was a lot of fear in me. And I moved here to Amarillo. And I was 18 years old when I gave my life to Jesus. And when I look back at the first 18 years of my life versus the last 19, I can see God completely changing my life. I, I came to this altar and I asked Jesus to forgive me and to take away all of that anger and all of that bitterness and to change me, and he did. And when I think about the first 18 years of my life, like dealing with loneliness and rejection, not having a good relationship with my mom, being angry and rebellious, and then when Jesus came into my life, he began to restore the relationship with my mom. He... Um, you know, I no longer feel lonely. I no longer feel empty because Jesus filled that void, and it hasn't changed. Jesus is the only one that can fill the void, whether, you know, what it doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle you live. There's a void in your life that is left there from sin, and Jesus is the only one that can fill that. So I thank God that now, you know, I know what love is. Even though I grew up without a dad, well, I have a heavenly father that has never left me. In the 19 years that I have been serving God, he has been faithful. He has been the only constant thing in my life. Life has changed so much in the last 19 years, but God has always been constant. And if you don't, you don't know that, you don't know that type of stability, and you try to find it maybe in your job or in a relation, it doesn't matter... Like, you're never going to find it outside of the will of God. So if you're out there and you're listening and, you know, maybe you're afraid right now because of what's going on in the world, you know, I just want to tell you, like, don't wait. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Ask him to save you. He loves you. He wants to forgive you. 
and he wants to have a relationship with you. And from this point on, you know, asking Jesus Christ into your life, this point on, your life can be different. And, you know, that's just something that you're not going to regret. I haven't looked back, you know, eight, 19 years ago that I gave my life to Jesus. I will never go back to the life I used to live. There's nothing out in the world that's going to give me what Jesus Christ has given me. So I just want to thank God for saving me, and I want to encourage you, don't wait before it's too late. Hello, um, my name is Wendy, for those of you that don't know me. I was pretty much raised in church. Um, I was pretty much born there, um, and I always thought that Jesus was just like the norm. I took it for granted. Um, I really didn't care as a young kid, um, as church kids usually do. Um, we just played the church game. I would sit maybe in the front row and just play and listen and think that I would go to heaven because my parents knew Jesus. Um, I never saw the reason that I should know Jesus. Um, I played the church game for I don't know how long. But it wasn't until I went to a boot camp that um, a sermon was preached, and it was towards the church kids. And it was saying that we take it for granted. We don't realize the relationship we should have with Jesus. And that just hit me because I would see this as a routine. Um, and I thought that me as a good kid, I never did drugs. I never drank but I always looked for love, maybe in uh, tons of friends, um, being as accepted by everyone, trying to find boys to like me. Um, I tried to fill that void in my heart, the love that I was seeking, but it wasn't, it never came until Jesus. Um, and I accepted him in my heart. And that's when I knew there is nothing in this world that can fill that void but Jesus. And if you're out there, and it doesn't matter the age you are, it doesn't matter where you're from, what you've done, what sin, what great sin you think you've done, Jesus can forgive you. Our, righteous, our righteousness is like dirty rags. It means it's nothing to God if we don't accept him in our heart. And it's not religion. It has to be a true relationship with him. Um... And it wasn't until then that I bowed my knee and I gave my life to Jesus that I, that void was filled. And it's been amazing um, just to see how much God forgives you, how much he loves you, how much he died on the cross for you. He gave his one and only son for you, no matter what you've done, no matter if you think you're down in the bottom pit. God's there for you, and he loves you. And if you're out there and you're seeking for something in this world, and you think it's in boys, you think it's in drugs, you think it's in dr parties, you think it's in just friends, it's not. Because Jesus is here for you, and he died for you. And if you're out there, I encourage you to accept him in your heart, because that's the only thing that will fill that void that you are trying to fill in your life. And no matter the age... I am 19, and I accepted him four years ago, and it's been amazing, and God can do great things with you, so I just encourage you to accept Jesus in your heart. Amen, gloria a Dios. Mi nombre es Lázaro Chico. Yo vengo de la Nación de México, y vine conociendo a Dios hace 22 años. Mi vida estaba perdida antes en el ocultismo. Yo era una persona con pelo largo, aretes, barbón. Era un amante de Satanás. Era una persona que me gustaba mucho el rol satánico. Yo no podía dormir sin la música satánica. Tenía camisas con demonios. Duré 19 años vistiendo negro. Tiempo de calor, tiempo de frío. No conocía de Dios. Yo sabía que había alguien allá arriba o como uno clama como mexicano. Oh, sí, Dios, yo voy a ir al cielo. Dios, sí, voy al cielo. Y era una persona que tomaba, fumaba, salía con muchas mujeres. Pero mi mentalidad, como yo vivía, pensaba que Dios me amaba. Había gente, amigos, que me invitaban a la iglesia. Yo le decía a ellos, hay mujeres 
si hay mujeres voy, ellos me decían, estás loco tú, necesitas cambiar, no, dije, yo estoy bien. En mi edad de 17 años hasta los 29 años, fui adicto al satanismo, fui adicto a revistas satánicas, fui adicto a, a la música de, de, digamos, de heavy metal, de rock pesado de aquí de Estados Unidos, y una persona influenciada por un espíritu de Satanás. Mi mamá me hacía brujería, me pasaba el huevo, me limpiaba con hierbas, me limpiaba con una piedra que se ponía en la lumbre para, para decir que era lo que tenía uno, era amante de que me leyeran las manos, las cartas, y aún así yo decía, voy a ir al cielo, en mi, ceguera, en mi ceguera de las cosas de Dios, porque era una persona que no me gustaba agarrar la palabra de Dios, la Biblia. Muchas veces me decían, lee la Biblia, no, están locos ustedes. Era una persona como muchos mexicanos hay, que pensamos que como estamos viviendo, vamos a ir al cielo, hidrólatras. Era muy adicto, digamos, a, a la Virgen de Guadalupe, a Judas Tadeo, a Matín de Porras, a todo tipo de ídolos. Yo me enojaba cuando me hablaba mal de ellos. Y yo decía que me iba a ir al cielo. En el 2000, vine conociendo la palabra de Dios, vine conociendo al Señor Jesucristo, porque Dios hizo un milagro en mi vida. Tuve un accidente, yo en el aceite me secó mi mano unas, unas 300 libras. Y hasta que esa vez, un pastor oró por mí, me dijo él, ¿Qué te pasó? Le dije yo, pues tuve un accidente, mi mano derecha no cierra, está seca por seis meses. Me dice este pastor, ¿tú crees que Jesucristo te va a sanar? Le dije, sí. Después de seis meses, Jesucristo me sanó mi mano derecha. De ahí, dije, ¿dónde he estado yo todo este tiempo perdido en la oscuridad? Comencé a leer la palabra de Dios y me di cuenta que solo hay un camino al cielo y es Jesucristo el que cambió mi vida después de tantos años perdido en la oscuridad, después de tantos años amando los dibujos satánicos, más bien ser adicto a ese Dios de las tinieblas, Jesucristo me trajo a la luz, Jesucristo abrió mis ojos a la realidad y dije yo entre mí, ¿dónde estaba yo perdido? Si todos estos años hubiera conocido a Jesucristo, hubiera sido algo diferente, pero no, a causa de las tradiciones que trae uno como mexicano o como hispano, está uno ciego. Y en ese momento que Jesucristo sanó mi vida, que me liberó de las cadenas de Satanás, vi la realidad. Vi que Jesucristo no está en la cruz. Jesucristo bajó del tercer día de la cruz para morir por nosotros y vi que solamente Él es el camino a la vida eterna, es el amor de que necesitamos nosotros en nuestros corazones, es el único que puede romper las cadenas en que nosotros los hispanos estamos adictos a la amargura, a la brujería, a la idolatría, a las tradiciones como hispanos que somos. Jesucristo es el único que quebró las cadenas en mi vida. ¿Por qué? Porque yo vengo de una genealogía de brujas, genealogía de huizca, digamos, o de adictos al satanismo, y solamente él, me mostró la luz que yo necesitaba en mi corazón. Déjame decirte algo. Si tú estás escuchando en este momento los testimonios, Jesucristo te puede dar una solución a tu vida. Jesucristo te puede dar la paz, el amor, que no vas a encontrar en el mundo, que no vas a encontrar en las tradiciones que tenemos nosotros los hispanos. Jesucristo es el único que te puede dar el amor. No la cerveza, no el alcohol, no las mujeres de la calle, no. Jesucristo es amor y es real. ¿Por qué? Porque Él murió por nosotros, por ti, por mí, por todos murió. Pero muchas las veces como hispanos lo tenemos colgado en la cruz. Él no está en la cruz. Él está tocando tu corazón para que tú lo abras y lo aceptes como Señor y Salvador. Amén. Amen. These were life stories that you heard about people's lives that have been changed. And if you're out there and you've heard these stories, and maybe some of these stories have hit you right between the eyes and you're battling. And you're, maybe you're one of the ones who thought, you know what, church people, they, they grew up in church. And, you know, they, they haven't had the life that I've had. They haven't seen quite the, the stuff that I have seen. And maybe one of these stories, and these are, these are just a few of many stories of people who has experienced a life change in Jesus Christ. Every one of these came from different backgrounds. Broken homes, the streets, places 
amen, that, that uh, crime existed. But let me tell you something. Each one had one thing in common, and that was an encounter with Jesus Christ. And you might be sitting where you are, contemplating, what next? Where do I go next? What do I do? Can I tell you, Jesus Christ is the answer. He always been. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It, it doesn't mean that only God helps certain people and only certain people are qualified for forgiveness. There are only certain people in certain times, and that was in the 1950s or the 1970s, or that's good for you. But let me tell you something about the gospel. The gospel is relevant across every culture, across every year, across every time frame, and he is the same saving power today as he did in their lives when they first met Jesus Christ. And if you're sitting in your chair right now, if you would bow your heads with me and close your eyes and you want to experience this life change, maybe this time of seclusion and isolation has really got you thinking. It's really got you processing some things and soul searching, if you will. And you're really looking inside your life and you, you wonder, I might need a change. And it takes something inside of you to really be humble before God. To admit that you really do need a Savior. You, me, by ourselves is not good enough. The reason why Jesus died is because nobody was qualified to be the sacrificial lamb. The lamb that was slain in biblical times was a sacrifice for sin. The priests would take a lamb and they would sacrifice the lamb for the people's sin. And the priest would lay his hand on the head, and on the head he would proclaim the curse on the lamb. They would butcher the lamb, the blood would splatter, and on the, the altar the blood would be there. And they'd have to do this periodically. It wasn't a one-time thing, and they were done. But Jesus, the Bible calls him the lamb, the perfect lamb, the sacrificial lamb. So that once and for all, the sins of man can be atoned, through a perfect man's death. And Jesus was the final sacrifice, which is good news because you don't have to continue to beat yourself over the head. You don't have to continue to always wonder in fear that am I good enough? Can I measure up? Or what do I need to do? What kind of works do I need to do? That once you believe by faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died, He rose again, and He's coming again, by faith confessing that, and by work showing your life to Jesus Christ, giving to Him to live a life for Him, you shall be saved. And it's that simple. There's no twists and there's no turns. One thing about Jesus is He said, the Bible says He's come to make the crooked places straight. All the confusion, he makes plain and he makes it straight. Religion will have you to do all kinds of things and jumping through hoops and 10 of this and 20 of that and one a days and just believing in Jesus Christ and admitting that you're a sinner, repenting of your sin. That's how simple, that's how fast your life can change and be made new. And if you want to accept Jesus in your life, tonight can be your night of a new beginning. And you could have a story, just like those who said tonight, a story that can touch a life. I want you to say this prayer after me, and when you say it, I really want you to mean it with all your heart. And you've got to believe that what you're saying is true and what you're saying is real, because it is by faith right now that Jesus wants to come and live inside of you. Would you say these words? Say, Heavenly Father, would you please forgive me of my sin? I admit that I am a sinner. I have transgressed against you. I have sinned against you. And I have practiced a lifestyle of sin. And I believe that your love and your mercy is big enough to cover my sin and to wash it away. I receive your forgiveness. I forgive myself. And I let go of all of the discrepancies and all of the past and all the sin to wander no more in a state of sinful treason 
a state of disobedience. And I turn to you from this moment on. Thank you for your mercy on my life. In Jesus' name, amen. What you did is you just, by faith, accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. And because you gave your life to Jesus Christ, I do want to offer you an option to connect with us. It's imperative to connect with the church, the body of believers. You can connect with us. We want to help you on your newfound journey in Jesus Christ. You can call us at 806-372-6133. Feel free to call us. If you have any questions, leave a message. Or you can email us or contact us, I'm sorry, through our social media outlets on Facebook or on Instagram. And feel free to have any questions. We want to contact you and congratulate you on your newfound decision in serving Jesus Christ. And to those who are listening, you're a Christian here. These life stories are real. And I encourage you to share your life story on social media, whatever you can, spread the word of God. I know you may be home right now, can't go to work, locked up, but you know what? Social media, the internet, phones, it has broadened the way and given us an, an, an opportunity to spread the gospel. Share your story with somebody so they can experience the power of Jesus Christ. Remember, our live stream service, our drive-in service Sunday morning, 1030 here right outside the church. I encourage you, come in and enjoy some preaching. Amen outside. God bless you. Have a wonderful night tonight. God bless you. Welcome back. We are happy to have you join us online here at The Door Church. Whether you've been with us from the beginning, or if this is your first time tuning in, we welcome you and we hope that you continue to join us online for each service. If you need prayer, we are here for you. While our doors may be closed for the moment, our hearts are wide open to help you carry your burdens. Staff pastors are available to pray for your needs or even contact you personally if you'd like. You can direct message us on Facebook and Instagram or please call 806-372-6133 and one of our staff members will contact you. If you have missed our live stream service or there's a great message you wanna share with your friends and family, all of our services are uploaded to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. These are great resources to check out. Well, that's it for now. But if you'd like to stay in the know, you could follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again at our next service. Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m.